Hello everyone. In this video, we are going through the hormones of the adrenal cortex. Adrenal gland, which are also known as suprarenal gland, so these are located on the superior pole of the kidney. So that is the adrenal gland. These are also known as suprarenal gland. Adrenal gland having the cortex and medulla. So this part, the blue color part, you are saying that is the medulla. which is the innermost part or the central part and the cortex which surrounding the medullary portion and in the cortex there are three different parts here it is the adrenal cortex and there are three different parts of the adrenal cortex so the outermost part it is the zona glomerulosa which secretes the aldosterone hormone the inner part of the zona glomerulosa which is known as zona fasciculata and the most inner part of the adrenal cortex which surrounding the medulla it is known as zona reticularis this zona fasciculata and zona reticularis both secrete the cortisol and androgens these are the steroid hormones basically this one it is the mineralocorticoid and this one it is the glucocorticoids so principal hormones of the adrenal cortex these all are the steroid hormones first one glucocorticoid this includes the cortisol which helps in the glucose metabolism as well as physiologic stress response so when a person is in stress there will be release of the steroid hormone which is the cortisol mainly glucocorticoid cortisol hormone now the mineralocorticoid this one it is the aldosterone and it regulate the sodium potassium balance inside our body the third one it is the adrenal androgens this includes the sex hormones which includes the dihydroepiandrosterone dhea and androstenedione so all these are the principal hormones of the adrenal cortex which includes the cortisol aldosterone dihydroepiandrosterone dhea and androstenedione all right now the biosynthesis of the hormones of the adrenal cortex these all are the steroid hormones so basically synthesized from the cholesterol detailed structure and steps you will learn in the biochemistry part so here we are focus only on the physiological aspect of the hormones of the adrenal cortex now the natural steroids which includes the cortisol corticosterone aldosterone deoxycorticosterone and dihydroepiandrosterone so these are natural steroids now the synthetic steroids cortisone prednisolone methylprednisolone dexamethasone and 9 alpha fluorocortisol now the transport and fat of uh, steroid hormones from the adrenal cortex transport cortisol mainly with the cortisol binding globulin transcortin it is transported and lesser extent with the albumin so major uh, transport occurs through the transcortin which is the globulin and aldosterone loosely with the plasma proteins and mainly it is the traversing or the transporting throughout the body to in the free form degradation mainly in the liver glucuronides and sulfates so the degradation that means breakdown mainly takes place inside the liver and uh, in the excretion part 25% is is excreted in the feces and around 75% is excreted in the urine now the first cortisol that is the glucocorticoid hormone now the which are the metabolic actions of the cortisol hormone on the carbohydrate metabolism so first effect it increase the gluconeogenesis in the liver cells by 6 to 10 times to activate this type of activity it increases the enzymes inside the liver for the gluconeogenesis as well as it mobilizes amino acid from the extra hepatic tissue for example muscles so this amino acid will help in the synthesis of the glucose now secondly it increases the glycogen deposition in the liver glycogen is available in the liver for the further needs whenever there is a need is required glycogen breakdown will be takes place it decreases the peripheral utilization of the glucose so ultimately there will be increase in the glucose concentration it decreases the sensitivity of insulin receptors to the insulin due to this or both of these effect ultimately leads to the increase glucose concentration inside the body so the condition is known as hyperglycemia and the it is known as adrenal diabetes so this cortisol or the glucocorticoid hormone basically increase the 
blood glucose levels so it is also known as diabetogenic hormone now the metabolic actions on the protein metabolism it mobilizes amino acids from the extra hepatic but it increases proteins in the liver so ultimately it mobilizes the amino acid from the extra hepatic tissues for example muscles and it also increases the protein inside the liver so these amino acids will accumulated inside the liver and this helps in the protein synthesis in the liver reduction in the cellular protein except liver so in the extra hepatic tissue increase protein breakdown decrease transport of amino acids so here what is happening in the extra hepatic tissues that mean tissues other than liver increase protein breakdown the protein breakdown will takes place and decrease transport of amino acid in the extra hepatic tissue so ultimately the protein breakdown is the net effect and in liver there will be protein synthesis occurs due to stimulating the particular enzymes in the previous slide we went through the process of gluconeogenesis where the this cortisol or glucocorticoid hormone increase the proteins inside the liver which helps in the gluconeogenesis process this proteins basically the enzymes for the gluconeogenesis so there will be increase in the protein synthesis in other words we can also say that there will be increased transport of amino acid inside the liver and uh, there will be also increase in the rate of deamination increase formation of plasma proteins and increase gluconeogenesis that is what you already know about that and it causes the depletion of cellular proteins and increase in the blood amino acid level so these are the metabolic actions of cortisol on the protein metabolism now the metabolic actions of cortisol on the fat metabolism it promotes the mobilization of fats in the adipose tissue so whatever the fat is stored inside the adipose tissue has been break down and this fat will be released inside the blood so due to this there will be increase in the free fatty level in the blood and there will be also increase in the oxidation of the fatty acids in the cells in the conditions of starvation and stress shift glucose utilization to fatty acid utilization with conserves glucose and glycogen for the long term so whenever there is a condition of prolonged fasting or the starvation or the stressful condition the energy utilization is shifted from glucose to the fatty acid and here the important thing is that glucose and glycogen is stored for the long term use but still excess cortisol causes the buffalo torso and moon face that means here the excess cortisol is not the thing which handling the stress but when the cortisol level abnormally high or the excess it causes the buffalo torso and moon face that is the abnormal condition now the cortisol role in this stress types of stress increase in cortisol within the minutes so there are different types of stress which increase the cortisol within the minutes for example trauma of the any type surgery infections debilitating disease intense heat or cold injections of the epinephrine or same type of drug just like the epinephrine or adrenaline restraining the animal uh, it can't move and injections of necrotizing substances bend the skin so these all are the types of stress factors which increase the cortisol within a few minutes or within minute now in this stressful condition what is the mechanism of the cortisol hormone by mobilizing the fatty acids and amino acids to be used for the energy and synthesis of other substances especially in needy cells so basically it increase the fatty acids and amino acids fatty acids mainly utilized for the energy generative purpose and amino acid utilized for the synthesis of different enzymes which helps in the process which regulating the stress secondly it increases the sensitivity of the vasculature to the catecholamines that means adrenaline and uh, noradrenaline so it increases the sensitivity of the blood vessels to the adrenaline and noradrenaline so it having the permissive action now the cortisol anti inflammatory effect this cortisol hormone blocks the early stages of the inflammation so that is the main effect of the steroid type of hormones so these are the different types of activity which is performed by the cortisol hormone it stabilizes the lysosomal membrane 
it decreases the capillary permeability it decreases the migration of leukocytes and phagocytosis it suppresses the immunity so there will be decreased tissue reactions suppression of the lymphocytes decrease antibody and t cells and decrease eosinophils it also decrease the interleukin 1 released by the wbc decrease the temperature and so there will be decrease conditions of the vasodilatation so all these are the factors regulated by the cortisol so that it blocks the early stage of the inflammatory process resolution of the inflammation if the inflammation has already occurred then it causes the resolution of the inflammation within hours to days if the immunity is very weak or lack it may lead to the fulminating infection and death it can be used to prevent the tissue rejections so these are the anti inflammatory effects of the cortisol hormone now the cortisol effects on different organs on the blood it decreases the eosinophils it decreases the lymphocytes it increases the rbc count in cns cortisol is causes the euphoric condition in cvs there will be increased capillary fragility increased sensitivity to the adrenaline salt and water retention in the chronic views so these are the effect on the cardiovascular system bones it causes the osteoporosis on the git it increase the hcl secretion so that there will be damage to the mucosal barrier and ultimately this leads to the peptic ulcer so how in the mental stress or the stressful condition there will be release of the cortisol this increase the hcl secretion which damages the mucosal barrier and so the development of peptic ulcer inside the gi tract this cortisol is also causes the muscle breakdown it causes the thinning of the skin lung synthesis of the surfactant is also possible and uh, females it causes the breast development so these are the effects of cortisol on the different types of organs inside our body now the regulation of cortisol secretion mechanism of action is like other steroid hormones basically of the this cortisol regulation mainly via the adrenocorticotropic hormone which is a polypeptide hormone it is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland so the hormone of the anterior pituitary glands are controlled by the hypothalamic releasing an inhibitory hormone so here the adrenocorticotropic hormone which is the hormone of the anterior pituitary gland and it is regulated by the corticotropin releasing hormone which is secreted from the hypothalamus so it also increase the melanocyte stimulating hormone beta lipoprotein and beta endorphins it is regulated by the negative feedback mechanism same other hormones it is released in the stressful condition and circadian rhythm that means highest in the early morning and lowest in the evening so this one it is the diagrammatical representation of the regulation of the cortisol via the negative feedback mechanism so here the hypothalamus release the corticotropin releasing hormone crh which stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release the acth adrenocorticotropic hormone and this adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulate the adrenal cortex so there will be release of the cortisol and once this cortisol hormone has been released it negatively inhibit the anterior pituitary gland as well as hypothalamus so there won't be any release of crh and acts from the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland respectively when the person is in the excessive stressful condition it stimulates the hypothalamus gland so that there will be release of the crh and hence acts and hence cortisol now what the cortisol will do it increase the gluconeogenesis it increase the protein mobilization it increase the fat mobilization and it stabilizes the lysosomes so all this things are happening under the effect of cortisol which relieves or reduces the stressful condition now the aldosterone it's a major mineralocorticoid hormone it acts in the kidney mainly on the collecting tubules and also collecting ducts and distal convoluted tubule so the aldosterone main effect on the kidney and it acts on the collecting tubules collecting ducts and distal convoluted tubule or dct it stimulate the active reabsorption of sodium ion from the distal convoluted tubule collecting duct and collecting tubules
This aldosterone also stimulates the active excretion of potassium ion from the principal cells. It also stimulates the excretion of hydrogen ion. Now water is passively reabsorbed with the sodium ion. Once the sodium ion reabsorption occurs and on behind the sodium ion there will be also running water passively. So that is the main action of the aldosterone hormone on the kidney on the distal convoluted tubule collecting duct and collecting tubule. Efficiency of the aldosterone there will be more excretion of sodium along with the water. So there will be decrease in the extracellular fluid volume and the conditions like shock, dehydration and uh, hyperkalemia should be the condition because excretion of the potassium ion is not possible without the aldosterone. So that uh, hyperkalemia that means increased potassium ion concentration inside our body and when the conditions of aldosterone excess there will be hypokalemia that means decrease in potassium ion due to excessive excretion of potassium ion from the principal cells of the collecting tubule. So these are both the abnormal conditions. Normally this is the excess of the aldosterone. Now the mechanism of action of aldosterone hormone. It takes 45 minutes to increase the rate of sodium absorption. So that is the aldosterone which binds with the receptor and once the receptor uh, aldosterone complex enter inside the nucleus and uh, there will be increase in the protein translation transcription all the process and ultimately there will be synthesis of the different types of proteins first there will be synthesis of the sodium channels which increase the sodium absorption from the tubular lumen and secondly it also increase the sodium potassium pump which pumps the sodium ion inside the renal interstitial fluid and ultimately inside the blur. Now the other actions of the aldosterone on the sweet and salivary glands it enhances the sodium chloride reabsorption and potassium excretion by the ducts from the primary secretion. So here one thing we have to note that saliva secretion is mainly regulated by the neural mechanism but here the aldosterone hormone modify the saliva which is secreted in the salivary gland it doesn't directly stimulate the saliva release all right so that is important thing reducing the sodium loss from the body in the sweat in intestine it enhances the sodium absorption basically from the colon and lack of aldosterone so there will be poor sodium and water absorption leads to the diarrhea H plus ion it increases the tubular H plus secretion and so there will be mild alkalosis which occurs due to loss of hydrogen ion inside the urine. Now which are the factors which regulate the aldosterone secretion whenever there is a increased potassium ion concentration in the extracellular fluid so there will be release of the aldosterone increased activity of renin angiotensin system so that is also the one activity of the stimulation of the aldosterone increased sodium ion concentration in the extracellular fluid which decrease the release of the aldosterone adrenocorticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary gland which also stimulate and regulate the activity or the release of the aldosterone and first two factors are more potent so out of all these factors the first two factors are more effective in regulating the aldosterone secretion so that is all about the aldosterone which is the major mineralocorticoid or the steroid hormone inside our body